I'm extremely pleased with the second casting. Um, now I've I've done a, I've gone ahead and done a few things off camera. I'll explain what they are. We had a little air pocket that was formed here on top of the nose, and you recall the air pocket that was here. And this was not because I discovered this was not because the um, um, the small amount of resin leached out the top of the mold. This happened because uh, not enough resin got into the top of the mold. I, I could have probably put a little less in and then tipped it over and covered the, uh, the, the holes at the top and been able to tip this over and coat this part of the skull so that upon filling the, the, um, the resin would have found its own level and would have, you know, meshed up against itself. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, that's been filled in using the Tech Bond SI Black, which is the uh, the thicker, uh, the, the thick viscosity um, CA glue from Tech Bond. Uh, and I used some of the Tech Bond filler, okay, over the top of the glue. I also used a little baking soda that I keep in a pill bottle. What I'm going to do now, I'm, I've started to put some details in that didn't show up because this is not, you know, this is not molding silicone. This here. This is not really mold making silicone. So it doesn't pick up every little detail. It picks up enough where you can work with it. But for instance, the seam down the center of the nasal bones, it didn't pick up on the casting. So what I'm using, I'm using a spear point file. Uh, it has, it can, the very edge of the two of the two sides comes down to a, a narrow uh, edge and that could be used um, for carving and, and filing in details that you otherwise would not get. And you can see I started to kind of replicate the center seam and it's best to do this kind of work on a work surface for the simple reason that you can hold the skull still, you, you can hold your resin subject still and, you know, take away with the file and be able to apply a decent amount of pressure. Now, I want to separate the very tip. Now, this is if you want to go crazy with details. You can. Now, and, and the only reason I want to is because I will be remolding this casting and I want it as exact as I can possibly get it. Okay? I want a good replica skull. Um, there are other lines, other suture lines here on the front of the nasal bones where they attach to the main uh, body of the skull. And we could go like so. And right here we have an air pocket under the casting I just found that it's right here so it's real real thin um, what I'm going to do is I'll reinforce that with more tech bond when I'm done adjusting and all um, I've gone down to these little bones in front here and I've gone in between them with the file and separated them Again, uh, I'm using this, the natural skull as my guide. Oh, another thing. You can see the uh, little holes here in the front on the inside of the frontal face of the skull. Well, I've recreated, well you, can, you can make out where they're located here. And because this is so thin, I was able to push through the file, push the file through the resin, I should say. And I've been able to recreate them as per the natural skull. I go in through the, through the I go up through the bottom side, and with the skull going back, uh, with the um, file going back and forth through the opening, I can recreate that. Now you could sure you could use a Dremel, and it would be faster, but this is a lot more accurate. Yeah, it's more time consuming, but you're going to get a better result. You can really control the size, and you can see on this particular skull, all right, this opening right here, this little hole right here, 
on the front of it is larger than the hole on this side. So now we have this on the reproduction skull, the hole here on the same side as the natural skull is larger than the hole here, the same as the natural skull. And I just, I want to match this, I want to match this little sucker up as much as I can. Like I say, this is, <laughs> it's really funny because I started out, I wanted to be able to um, get a skull plate for a mount. And on the skull plates, for those who don't know in taxonomy, you only use <clears throat> about this portion right here, from, from, from here up. And on some mannequins, you cut across and you only use from here and here. You only use this section here like so. Here and here. All right? So it's just this upper portion. It's called the skull cap. But I could have just molded this, but it's a clip springer skull. And they're not that common. So yeah, I wanted to have a really nice reproduction. Now, this opening here in these bones, this opening right here in the front on these little bones, I want to reproduce that here. Now there's two ways to go about it. I can use the file, which seems to be working, it's cutting right through. And a little more dangerous way to do it is to use the Dremel. But the file here is actually, it's, it's this really sharp little spear point on the file that's allowing me to do this. I can get in like so and take this down and the nice thing is the, the, the kind of spear blade structure of this file. I, it would be easier if I had handles on these files, I know, but this is an old set. I don't have a handles for them, and I've been using them like this forever. Now, as I get towards the front, I'll switch from the spear point. I'll go to a round file, a small round file. I'm trying to... Make from my selection of files here. We'll go with a round one here and we'll go towards the front because as you can see on the front of this skull This area is more rounded at the front Okay, right here. It's more rounded This will simply give it a spear point So what I want to do is I want to recreate recreate that roundness So using the round file I can do that Now again, I'm going to work it down on the work surface so that I, I can control the, uh, the skull, the casting, make sure it stays in one place. And I use short little strokes, back and forth strokes. And you can see this is very, very thin, just like on the actual skull, okay? So you want to be careful. Nice, nice, nice. Go back now. The underside, you can see where we have some flashing from that, and we'll just simply take that away with the file, and I think with my X-Acto knife, with my hobby knife. We'll just cut these shavings away. Just like so. All right, so even though this casting came out of a temporary mold, I can still get as much detail into this as I dare to put in. See, that breaks right through. Why does it break right through? Because this was simply flashing, okay, going across this front part of the mold. That's just simply flashing down, down the center, all right? So yeah, you can go along and cut this away actually push it away with the file and get a more exact recreation. Now when I finally do create another mold of this skull, I'm going to uh, uh, use a brush up or brush on method. I'm going to probably take my 7315 that I used on the African Wildcat skull and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thicken it. There's a product called Tin Fix made by Platzil, and I will thicken it, and I will, after I clay the, the skull up, as I did here, I will brush on the top layer, and I will cut into the, uh, go into the eye sockets, 
I may make the eye sockets solid. I may make them concaved. I haven't yet decided on that. Um, but I'll make it a, a brush-on uh, mold, which is also called a glove-type mold. And that will allow me to peel the thing away um, without a lot of undue pressure. Um, even though this was not a pour-on, this was a kind of a putty applied mold. Um, I'm going to use a, a, a different strategy for making the next mold. It serves a dual purpose. It allows you to create an extraordinarily flexible mold while at the same time using less product. Less product keeps my expenses down. Keeping my expenses down would keep the cost down for anyone who wants to buy a reproduction. Like I said, I do these things with the market in mind. You know, does anyone want to buy one? Uh, is there a market for it? What kind of price do I need to put on something like this? These are all things, you know, that come into play. Now I see this can go up this away. I'm just simply matching what's on the natural skull here at this point. The natural skull is my reference, okay? I always talk to people about you must use reference if you want to know what you're doing, you want to make whatever you're doing accurate, you need to have proper reference. Well, I have the three-dimensional skull here. Normally I use photo reference, but in this case, I have a three-dimensional skull. I might as well use it while it's still in my possession before I ship it back to its owner. And it will go back. The gentleman who loaned it to me will be getting his skull back intact. Nice and clean. Undamaged. And I think what we've got here is pretty darn close. I can try to separate. I can create this little separation here. I can try and do that here, hopefully without breaking anything. And I will scrape rather than cut. I'll scrape down with the hobby knife. And I think I might have succeeded. It doesn't have to be an exact match, but pretty darn close. Just like so. Yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> that looks nice. That is a little bit of flashing right here. Now the flashing and whatnot, it's it would be difficult and it's almost impossible to use the the hobby knife. Um, and it would be extraordinarily difficult to get in there with a hobby file. And also called a jeweler's file. So I will use some grinding bits uh, in my Dremel motor tool. Alrighty, notice here on the skull these little bones that come down at the rear of the skull here and here. These are part of the, behind the tympanic boule, which of course is the, um, the chamber for the ear canal, okay? Now, you see this one here has a bit of a curve to it. Okay, so, putting the natural skull aside for the moment, you can see this one molded, this one came out with the casting. The other side, however, is missing. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to build that up. And I'm going to build that up using the Tech Bond SI Black. Ta -da! And some baking soda. Ta -da -da -da! Okay. Let's put that out of the way. Now, the way I do it, it's real simple. I've already started a little bit. I put the uh, CA glue on the tip of a craft stick or, yeah, craft stick. Then I touch the drop of it to the area I want to build down on. See, I want to build this down like so. And you see the little drop that's forming? I hope you can see the little drop that's forming here. All right. I then take the scoop end of my, there's a little scoop end on this modeling tool. I take it and I just touch the super glue to this. And 
and I repeat as often as needed. And with this light coating of, of baking soda that's on the modeling tool, after I put it on there, I can then shape it a bit. Like so. All right. Add a little more baking soda. Just a touch. Shape. Blow off the excess. Now you can can you see that this is actually beginning to drop? It's forming a drop. And that will match the drop of the actual bone here. Okay, and I'm going to continue that. But this is one of the ways, in fact, this is really the best way that you can build up a missing extension like this. It's just an extension bone. Again, attach the drop on the end of the modeling tool in place as such, like that, just like that, all right? Dip the scoop end of the modeling tool into the baking soda and touch the baking soda to the drop of super glue. Shape it as we go. And as you shape it, you'll see that you press some of the liquid part of the glue begins to come out a bit so just recover it all right and then we can start to shape it to match the opposite side and to for that I'm going to put a little baking soda on my on my thumb here I'm going to make contact with this and I'm going to press the modeling tool against the inside I want it I want this to flatten just a bit and as you flatten it it brings it down and can you see now there's something there all right, we've got a little bone structure taking shape. And this is continued until the shape matches that of the little bone on the natural skull. Move this here. Okay, you see how far down that comes? Okay, that's your reference. That's your reference point. And you can see back there, you can see where it's coming down. Okay, I have a little more to go. But you get the idea, okay? And this is the way I, I will continue to do this. I will continue to add the thickened CA cement, add it to the back of it, like so, and bring it down. Blend it to what I've got here. Oopsie daisy. Okay. You're dealing with a drip, so, it may, you know, you, you have to kind of work with it a little bit. Like so, and like so, like so. Let's scoop up what's on the work table here, on the work board. And here we have it. Again, put a little bit on the thumb. Powder in the thumb just a wee bit. I want to shape this like so. And here we go. Here we go. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. And we put it down like so. You can see where its location is right here. There's the natural skull, the reproduction. But you see how you can rebuild missing parts. That's what's great about all this. Now, with it all at this point, I have a little bare glue showing, a little shininess. That's, I can tell that's just the glue. I simply cover that again, blow off the excess. Now, if you want to really set it quickly, of course, just take the Tech Bond um, deactivator, okay? And I'll just simply give it a little spray. 
Doesn't need a lot. Just a touch. And that magic juice is solid. How solid is it? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Now we'll continue to let that set. It doesn't, I, I don't need any more than that. What I need after this is to simply start shaping it. And I will do that after a few hours. I just wanted you to see what can be done. Missing parts, not to worry. Not to worry. Those missing parts can simply be taken care of. I've already added some of the Tech Bond glue here to strengthen the, the ring of the uh, eye orbit at the zygomatic arch, both sides. This was a little weak back here. Uh, it's a little weak in front, but if I'm not mistaken, the actual bone here, okay, it could be filled in just a bit. And I will do that also. The same exact way. I'll scoop up some CA glue on the tip of the modeling tool. Bring it along here. I want to make sure I secure this in place very well. And then the baking soda. And then a little shot of uh, activator. Just real quick. That's mostly a repair than a rebuild. I want to make sure this holds. There. And what I'll do is I will shape this with file and Dremel tool to make sure this front of the socket is rounded. Front of this eye socket is more rounded. At any rate, there we have it. It can't be any easier than that to alter these things to reach the point of uh, the point of being an exact copy of the original. Okay. I think we're doing really well here with this. This is a real this was a really successful cast. Really successful cast. Um, in fact I'm I'm even debating if I'm gonna I may take some of that putty and uh, mold the top of the horns, the horn cores here, and uh, pop a couple of castings out and just attach them. Why? Because I can. <laughs> because I can. Um, and because I, I really enjoy making molds and things and castings. Of course, that'll be the easiest part to do. Uh, and I've sort of decided on the lower mandibles. I am going to secure them together, build up a clay bed for them, and I'm going to use the, the silicone putty, the, the, the caulking in the putty stage that I created in, and I'm going to build it up a, a two-part mold, and I'll have top half and bottom half, and I'll, I'll make the castings that way. Uh, then uh, a permanent silicone mold will be, will be made of those parts. But for now, this is it. This is, uh, this is the actual skull and its reproduction. And I think here we've got, um, we have some real good results on this second casting. Like I say, never, never become overly discouraged in your molding and casting projects. Because each one is a learning experience. Now, until this little fella right here, I had molded two other skulls. Well, actually, yeah, two other skulls. One was the vervet monkey. The other was the African wildcat. True, the African wildcat was molded twice. Yes, it was molded twice. Um, I learned from the mistakes of the first mold, which, as I have stated before, was a perfect way to mold, a perfectly acceptable way to mold a primate skull with solid eye orbits. Uh, I went with a different method there. And then I tried something altogether different for this little, this little delicate African antelope. And I'm really, really, really happy with the results. I'm so happy I could plot. You have to look up the Three Stooges for that one. At any rate, I will continue to detail this little skull and make it ready. There are other things. I have the little, there's a little 
marks here on the skull and all that need to be taken away, and I'll do those with a Dremel. I may or may not show them. Um, I may, I may not. I haven't decided yet. You know, I just have not decided yet. But I'm real, real pleased with what we've got going on here. I know I will put a sealer on top to kind of smooth the surface. It's a little rough. But that's just the nature of, this, of the type of mold it was in. Um, once we put this to a, a new mold, a full silicone mold, uh, it'll be a different story. But here we have a successful cast from a waste mold, which I've already made a repair to the, to the mold where it broke behind the eye socket. And the way you repair silicone is with silicone. And this little tube of silicone is, was bought purposely for repairing all silicone molds. You apply it to one side, spread it uh, on the part to be repaired, or the base where the part will be repaired, and then you simply put the piece down in place, and you let the silicone cure. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. I also put it into the tear here, and just simply wiped away the excess. And this will be allowed to cure overnight, because this was not activated with water in any way. So that will be allowed to cure. But in the meantime, I've got the original. I've got a copy. And I will let the owner of the original know that his skull will be on its way back to him shortly. I just have a few more little things to do with the, with the copy. Make sure I get it exact. And uh, we'll go from there. But this worked out very well. I'm more than, more than pleased. And I hope you enjoyed the project along with me. And I hope you learned something from it. I know I did. Take care until next time.